I looked at a lot of elephants from all over the, from Canada and the United States and went to zoos. But when I got in the cage with the elephant, it was dangerous. Yeah. The trainer said to me, you know, as, as many animals in the animal world, they have to dominate. And they have, to decide, they have to find their place. Are you the alpha animal or are they the alpha animal? He told me that it wasn't that long before I went into the cage that a girl they were training had been in there and the elephant decided to dominate her and he put a tusk through her throat, into her throat. Now she didn't die, she had a collapsed lung or something, but he, said, he showed me, he said, the bars are just wide enough for a person to slip out the elephant can't come after you. He said, so more people I'm trying to remember, but I think more people have died from elephants than any other animals in a zoo because, you know, you can be with an elephant for years and everything's fine. One day if it has a migraine, it steps on you, well, <laughs> you're dead and the elephant is, you know, maybe might regret it later, perhaps maybe not, but it's too late. They're too big. They're so big that they can, it doesn't take much for them to kill you. They can pick up a dime with their trunk, but they can also pull out a tree from its roots. Well, the, the elephant had its, it, there were... There were three elephants, and there was an African elephant and, and a Ceylonese Sil elephant and an Asian elephant in general, and they were connected by, they had a chain around their one leg, each of them, and so I stood in the middle, and he said, the first thing you have to do is get them familiar with you. So they started to smell me from the bottom of my feet, my shoes, all the way up. It was like three vacuum cleaners, like a suction cup, and they went up my body, and I just stood still, and they smelled me, just like a dog would, got familiar with me. And then I wanted, to, I, I wanted to study their anatomy, so I had already gone to the Natural History Museum in New York, and I'd gotten permission to take Jumbo the Elephant skeleton that P.T. Barnum had. And the skeleton was, was in there, was kind of in, was in storage. It wasn't out where people could see it. And I had to take all the plastic off of it, keep, because they kept the, wanted to keep the dust off of it. And I studied the skeleton, I created a little skeleton of, the, of, of Jumbo the elephant, the African elephant. Then I went back, I did the elephant, I created this elephant skeleton in clay. Then I, when I went in the cage with the elephant, I put on some of the muscles. And I, I, I started to, I found someone who had actually done an autopsy in the elephant. So this person had given me diagrams of elephant's uh, muscles and uh, anatomy, and I put the muscles on. And then when I got in the cage with the elephant, I went ahead and created more of the sense of the skin. and But I didn't want to create a taxidermy elephant because it's poetry in a way that you're creating, it's art. I wanted to create an elephant that didn't have as many wrinkles as the elephant because it's so wrinkled. It wasn't a particular elephant, it was an abstracted essential elephant. I wanted to, in a way, kind of a platonic way, create the form of elephant. This was a kind of idealized elephant.